is our God always, now and ever, and unto ages of the age of Let us commend ourselves and each other.
and at the same board let thine ears be attentive for the voice of my supplications. And the same form, if 
glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages. Filled with the images of 
those who have gone before us as athletes of the faith and as visual reminders of those that we are surrounded by as we're caught up to the heavenly places. I was discussing with someone earlier this week that was not orthodox about what we believe as orthodox Christians, and I said, when we come into the church, we enter a different world. It's nice to come in and smell the incense because involving the senses and we're, we're reminded of the prayers. We're reminded that we are in a really different place. And as we say in the true we come leaving all earthly care aside. Many of us have so much stress. You know, we have the, the news media, the bearers of bad news, that's how they make their money, is the worse it is, the more money they can make because the more people are paying attention. And it, it grips us and it grabs our attention and sometimes people are glued to the television set and just watch it for hours on end, leading to depression and anxiety. And Christ tells us, in the world you will have tribulation. But he says, fear not, I have overcome the world. He never told us life would be easy. He never promised us that we would not have tribulation. But he does tell us that we have eternal life and that he has overcome the world. And as we were praying this evening, the, the thought of the prophet Habakkuk came to my mind that the prophet Habakkuk foresaw the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem by the Babylonians. And he was trembling. And yet he said, though the fig tree does not blossom, though there's no cattle in the stall, though there's no sheep in the fold, yet I'll rejoice in God my Savior. I'll rejoice in God my Savior. Though everything he knew he saw being wiped away in the coming years, he realized it was God's judgment upon the people at that time, but he was able to rejoice. Now our message is very different. We have media that gives us bad news all the time. Perhaps we watch too much of it. I know I don't care to hear it anymore. <laughs> I just like to hear good news. And the gospel is the good news. Christ has conquered death. He's defeated the devil and rendered him powerless. We are already partakers of the kingdom of heaven. And we have a gift. A gift of eternal life that cannot be taken from us. But it is a gift that we can betray. And so I pray that brothers and sisters as we come and as we came to Vespers this evening, that we've left behind all the cares and worries and anxiety and bad news. Just leave it out there. Just leave it out there. And realize that we're caught up to the heavenly places because, you know, all man's glory is as the flower of the field, the wind passes over and is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. You know, we think of all of these things we put our trust in, put not your trust in princes and the sons of men in whom there is no salvation. When their breath departs, they return to the earth, but not very day their plans perish. All of the kingdoms of this world through the centuries have risen and fallen, and what do we have but distant memories? Let us put our hope and confidence in the Lord, because He is our hope, He is our salvation, and He gives us the free gift of eternal life. May God continue to give us that grace and that strength and that comfort, knowing in whom we have believed. And it doesn't matter what is going on around us. We, when I think of uh, the difficult times that I've faced in the past in my own life, when people say, that's all right, you'll come out okay. And I said, you know, we have no guarantees. Look at the former Soviet Union. I said, how many millions of people perished, but their faith remained intact, and they have eternal life with Christ in God. We're not promised a good outcome in every sense, in a worldly sense, 
But what we are promised is a good outcome in the eternal sense, with the gift of eternal life. May God bless you and keep you. As I looked at the, the prayer this evening, uh, at the bowing of the heads, guard them at all times, both during the present evening and the approaching night, from every foe, from all adverse powers of the devil, from vain thoughts and evil imaginations. May the Lord help rid our minds of vain thoughts and all these cares and worries, 85% of the things, probably more, of the things we worry about, we have no let us just put ourselves in the hands of God and realize that's where it has always been. It's just sometimes we become more aware of it than others. And I think in this day and time, we realize our life is in his hands. Let's leave it there and trust in him. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, and mercy upon us, and save us all.